Okay, today we're looking at um, the Medieval Army, GCSE Warfare Through Time, and this is a short revision clip, so it's not going to take too long. We're just going to blast through this particular topic. Um, we are looking at the Medieval Army between 1250 and 1500, um, infantry, cavalry, etc. And obviously one of the things we're going to consider is have things changed during this period. Firstly, the size of the armies during medieval times would change depending on circumstance. There was no permanent standing army, so therefore they would be assembled uh, from the people as and when required. Generally, armies tended to be about 5,000 and 10,000 between the, those two um, totals during this period. Armies were also split into two, infantry, cavalry. Infantry were the largest, consisted of um, untrained men, mostly foot soldiers, second class soldiers really, using weapons such as swords, daggers, clubs, axes. They might have a bit of protection in the form of leather jackets and skull caps. Cavalry, smallest part of the army. Cavalry is made up of soldiers mounted on horses, and these included people drawn from the nobility, including trained knights, so they had a higher social status. They were the best soldiers, were trained, used weapons such as long swords, lances, and for protection, they might wear chainmail garments, um, colourful coats for them and their horses, metal helmets to protect their head. As far as commander the armies were concerned, this was related to social status and hierarchy. Um, you had the feudal system developed under William the Conqueror. Uh, men from these wealthy noble families would be given powerful military positions might have hereditary titles such as the Earl of Surrey, the Duke of York, Agincourt, 1415. The culture was one of chivalry. Uh, nobles were familiar with military skills and service and therefore were best placed to lead their armies. Um, knights on opposing sides would treat each other better according to this chivalric code of honour. Um, for example, knights who surrendered to enemy knights in battle would be ransomed back rather than killed. Now, as the decades pass during this period, there is some evidence of significant change. The impact of the longbow as a weapon did cause the number of infantry soldiers to rise and led to the famous decline in mounted knights in the cavalry. Um, so at in 1250, at the start of this period, there were two infantry soldiers for every one cavalry soldier, but towards 1500, this was more like three infantrymen for every mounted knight, cavalry soldier. So the longbow is starting to play a prominent role on the battlefield during medieval times. It's a decisive weapon at Falkirk. It's a decisive weapon at Agincourt. It's powerful, huge range, rate of fire. Um, and therefore, you are going to need more soldiers trained in using this very effective weapon. And therefore, over time, many infant infantrymen became archers. And that obviously rebalanced the composition of armies towards the infantry rather than the cavalry. So that's a change during this period. As well as the longbow um, becoming more prominent on the battlefield during medieval times as well. Um, you also have the tactic of the Shiltron that was used by the Scots, most famously at Stirling Bridge in Bannockburn and, and Falkirk, of course. Um, and this wall of sharp spikes also proved to be an effective defensive formation against a cavalry charge. Um, and therefore knights were no longer as effective as they once were. That's very quickly the medieval army um, during um, 